I had David Griffin of the Pelicans front office last Thursday, Brian, and I asked him about why can't a general manager tell a player, no, we're just not sending you, even if you've asked for a trade. And his response was, "It, you know, it's not that simple because players know each other for years. And he called USA Basketball legal tampering, Brian. That's what he called it here, that he likes to call USA Basketball legal tampering because players get to know each other and they all say that they want to play with each other. Does the NBA like What's happened over the last couple of weeks? Well, I don't know. I wish I listened to that conversation because um, my guess is I, I assume Griff wasn't complaining about it because no, um, no, he was, was not. Team, it was Team USA. It was Team USA that helped LeBron and Kevin Love get to know each other, which triggered LeBron getting Kevin Love to want to be to play for the Cavs. Um, that they played together on Team USA in London in 2012, and in 2014 they were teammates with the Cavs and David Griffin. We're the first to tell you that, you know, that was the genesis of that. And uh, if you go back and look at team, uh, you know, uh, the Rio, the uh, Rio Olympic team, and you can start figuring out the pairings that have happened since then. Um, And, you know, this isn't unheard of. I mean, there's a lot of different ways this has happened over the years. I mean, players who have the same agent who have have tried to play together for years, decades, it's not new. Um, What I think the NBA, I think the, the frustration amongst the teams is is that some of these deals are prearranged and they're not involved. So let me give you the classic example of this offseason. Sure. Al Horford. Al Hor- the Celtics thought they were keeping Al Horford. You know, he, he was going to opt out of his contract. They knew that. And they said, okay, we're going to negotiate a new contract with you. Next thing you know, Al Horford says, hey, I'm going to go another direction. And it, it, the Celtics believe he had a prearranged deal lined up, ready to go with the 76ers. Now, I don't know whether that's true. You know, very few people are going to know whether that's true, but that's what the Celtics, I think, believe. And so that's the kind of tampering that drives teams crazy. Um, and, you know, the, the thing about it is, though, the league has kind of thrown their hands up. They, they've openly admitted that they can't control player-to-player tampering. They can't stop James Harden from calling up Chris Paul two years ago and saying, hey, why don't you come play with me for the Rockets? Go tell the Clippers you want to be traded here. They can't call Russell Westbrook. They can't stop. They can't police that. And they've chosen not to punish teams for doing you know, tampering or alleged tampering outside the season. So if you say something about a player on a TV show in December, that'll get you fined. If your team season is over and it's the draft combine and you, a team meets with an agent and starts making a, an offer to a free agent who's still six weeks away from free agency, the NBA has let that go. And by them, Rich, even by them letting the free agency window to go from midnight to 6 p.m., which frankly – is better for fans and better for television partners like us. We had a five-hour show that started at 6 o'clock Eastern mm. when last year our show started at midnight Eastern and everybody was sleeping when, when Paul George decided to resign. This year, everybody was wide awake. But by even doing that, the league is sort of giving a tip to the cap that they know all these deals are going to be pre-done. So – They've kind of gone down the road, and I don't know if they can put the toothpaste back in the tube. Well, just to let you know, Griffin was not complaining. I I asked him, you know, the the basic question is, why is it difficult? Because I'm coming from the world of the NFL where, for instance, what's going on with Melvin Gordon right now, I'm sure the Chargers are going to try and work out a deal with him. But in terms of trading him, uh, I, I mean, maybe if the Packers, you know, from their hometown in Wisconsin blows them away with a deal, which doesn't usually happen in training camp anyway, the answer is going to be no. Then ho- hold out, Melvin. You know, and when you come back, we'll be welcoming you back and let's go win a Super Bowl together. The NBA just seems to be a totally different story. And Griffin was – his response was, hey, I just want to create a spot where the stars want to stay – and if the stars do call up another star, they want to come to my spot. That was essentially what he was saying last week. And that's very pragmatic. That's very pragmatic because really what were we like, – if, if you're in Hollywood, okay, and you have a, a four-movie deal with Paramount, you know, it's been a longstanding thing. You just go, listen, Paramount, you and I are done. We're, I'm getting out of this. And, and they'll, they say in Hollywood that a deal is over when the talent says it's over. And that's kind of where we are in the NBA. James Harden and Russell Westbrook have three and four years left on their contracts. This is a situation where the teams would have all the power. But those contracts don't mean anything if you're a superstar. Now, if you're you know, a, a player who averages 15 points off the bench, you're not going to have the same sway. But if you're a superstar, your contract length doesn't mean anything. And the difference between the NFL and the NBA is they're not guaranteed. 
you know, so Chris Paul may go downhill and he may not be the same player in year three of this contract that he was in year one. They, the team that has him can't cut him and not pay him the last 80 million on his deal. Um, they have to pay. And so that's the big difference. And the reason that they have that leverage and the reason that you can do it is because Arnold Schwarzenegger can move product. And Chris Paul and James Harden and Russell Westbrook and their past have been able to move product. And in the NBA, where it's a five-team player game, this sounds very basic, but I don't think it's something you can't say. In a five-player game, when you have one player who's greater than almost everybody else, it makes a lot bigger difference than a running back or a quarterback or, or a, a left tackle and um, even a, a left fielder or a designated hitter. And so the players – have figured this out. It's taken them. I think the beginning of this was, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar demanding to be traded to, only to the Lakers. Oscar Robertson uh, filing a lawsuit that was the foundation of free agency in the NBA. It's taken 40 some years, but the players finally have gotten themselves into a position where they're going to maximize their power. And I don't know where the owners are going to go because while they can sit there in their group and say, we got to stop this. As soon as a, a superstar player raises his hand and is available on the free agent market or, or demands a trade like Kawhi Leonard, they beat each other over the heads to get, to, to get their hands on the guy. Right. And I just think we have – that's the most powerful position in all of American mm. sport, NBA superstar, and those guys are starting to leverage it. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.